Hey y'all, I'm Jules. Welcome back to another episode of Spirit Sherpa, the show that helps and encourages you on your journey to unlock your magic mojo. With me as always is the spirit doctor, Kelly Sparta, Shama Mama herself. That's her. <laughs> She's Kelly. <laughs> How you doing, Kelly? <laughs> oh, I think you and I are just as punchy. <laughs> always. It's been always. one of those days. <laughs> always. It's been one of those lives, man. <laughs> So, yeah, no, it's, it's good. It's good. Um, the, you know, we've got so much cool stuff going on here in Panama and I'm having so much fun with it. I, I, somehow I'm going viral with the Panamanians. And so I, I, I got like 45 new followers last yesterday. Yeah. On, oh, wow. On my That's cool. So, and I got an invitation to go to a, uh, farm in the area that has chickens and horses and, you know, stuff. So he's like, can, do you want to come? And I'm like, yeah, can I bring my husband? He's like, yeah. And I'm like, awesome. So, so, you know, this is fun. I'm like a minor celebrity. <laughs> you know, just hey, because I love Panama. Love they love, they love watching somebody who's, who's an immigrant enjoying their country. It's, I think that's really what it comes down to. So, and I'm loving the country. So. I, I am a classic example of that because I'm just, oh my God, if you have not seen my TikToks, you guys really need to watch them because there's some absolutely stunningly beautiful stuff happening here. So yeah, it's good. So That's totally awesome. unrelated to the stuff that we're doing yeah, here, except okay. in, in the form of, you know, building a life that you can love, which I think is ultimately what everyone wants who's, who's listening to this podcast, who enters into spirituality in any way, shape or form. The idea is to build a life you, you can love, right? And yes. part of that is about adjusting your inner world. And part of that's about adjusting your outer world, right? Richmond wasn't a good fit for us. So, okay. We, we, you know, we didn't want the weather in Boston. So we went to Richmond and then Richmond didn't have the connection points that we had hoped for. And so we came here. And being that it's an expat community, it was really easy to find new friends and to stitch in very quickly and to feel like you've been there. People are constantly stunned when I tell them I've only been here seven months. And it's because I've just become part of the landscape, right? Because that's what I do. But I, I, I couldn't do it in Richmond, and that's terrifying. <laughs> If that's I can't a bad do it, thing. Nobody can do it because that's my yeah. superpower, right? Military brat. I learned how to stitch in quickly, or else I never made friends, right? So yeah, so it's a good thing. It, it's it's really quite lovely. And so one of the things that you know I hear from people all the time who have been listening to this podcast for a long time, they're like, "Oh my god, my whole life has changed just because I'm listening to the podcast." And I love that. I love hearing that because it means I'm giving you really good content, right? And that's really my goal here is to make sure that you guys are getting great content. Um, and it means that you're using it, which means that my time doing this is not wasted, right? Because if you're implementing, then my time to give it to you has been utilized. And that, that really makes me happy that you're actually getting something out of it. Now, you know, we've been doing a lot of inner work here, but one of the things you may want to think about is how do you find your outer work, right? Because, you know, once you've gotten to a place where you are not in reaction, but in response, where you are solid in yourself and comfortable in your own skin, you know, which, you know, are the things that we do in our courses, obviously, but we've done some on here as well. So if you were mm -hmm. close, then they might've gotten you there, right? Um, and once you've gotten to that point and you're down to just sort of digging out the shadow work pieces, you know, that's an ongoing process for the rest of your life. You cannot wait to change your life for that process to be done because it's never freaking done, right? So what you then have to focus on is what, what do I want in my life? What do I not want in my life? And remove the things you don't want and add the things that you do want and just iterate and iterate and iterate until you get to what you want. I have been doing that ongoing for the last 20 years. It's how I found my husband. It's how I ended up here. It's how a lot of things have happened in my life. And so, you know, we're talking about synchronicities today because they help us to iterate, right? <laughs> and so, you know, they, they, you know, 
it's one of those things that when you're not sure what you want, then you can set an intention for the universe to help you find it, right? And this is another piece of the puzzle because oftentimes we don't know what we want. I've had entire years where I had no idea what I wanted, right? Sometimes half a decade where I was like, nah, I don't really know what I want. I know what I don't want, but I don't know what I want, right? And so when you can say, I don't know what I want, but I know I want to be happy. I know I want to feel loved. I know I want to be financially abundant. You know, I know that I want to feel successful. I know that I want to feel valued. You can say all of these things, right? This is, I know that I want these things. You don't have to know the how. You just have to set the intention. And so this is where we're going to marry the law of attraction with the recognizing of synchronicities. Okay. And this actually was a listener question. So I just want to say thank you guys, because when I put up the request in December, when I was scheduling this year's worth of podcast episodes, I said, please help me. What do you want to know more of? I've been coming up with these topics for four and a half years. I need some help. Right. When I did that, you guys came out in force and gave, gave me some great ideas. And, and Jules, you, you have the person who this was from, right? Yes, this was uh, Mary Martin. So this, Mary. this was her. Yes, Mary, you rock. So yes. uh, talking about synchronicities, how do they show up, how to watch for them, and what does it all mean? Yeah. So, and this is, this is a really interesting conversation. So uh, if you want a book on this subject, the best book on the subject is The Celestine Prophecy by James Redfield. Um, and that book came out oh, like 2000, I think, maybe late 90s. I think so. Yeah, it, it was a long time ago. Uh, and it's still 1993. There you go. Early 90s. So it's still just as relevant today as it was the day that it came out. It is incredibly helpful in terms of, of helping you to recognize where these things are coming from. Um, and so I'm going to leave the book to explain to you how all of that works. And what I'm going to do is talk to you about why it works, because that is the deeper level conversation. And at four and a half years in, we are having the deeper level conversation. <laughs> we started with the beginner stuff and now we're doing the more advanced. So the, you know, the synchronicities are, I mean, we all, we all see them. There was a, there was a movie by that name, right, with uh, uh, John Cusack and uh, somebody else who I don't remember. I have a thing for John Cusack, so I always remember him. But I'm like, Ooh, baby, John Cusack, that's my guy. He's a cutie. So he is. He's adorable. Anyway, um, somebody pointed out the other day that my husband looks like him. <laughs> so I was like, oh, hadn't noticed that, but you are correct. <laughs> See what you manifested? You didn't even notice. There, go. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> so uh, anyway, the, um, the, the thing about synchronicities is that what they are is, um, okay, how do, I, how do I put this? Because it's, it's, a, it's a complex thing here, right? So we exist in an uh, energetic reality in which the uh, there are uh, we're operating in a symbolic reality and we've talked about this ad nauseum because you know we we're constantly doing the, the um, mythology series and talking about symbology and things like that but it is a um, uh, holographic I think is probably the best term for it uh, reality in which Overlapping symbologies create existing experiences. Yeah, that's kind of the, it, I'm really getting deep here, guys. So I don't have great language for this. So I'm going to try and flesh it out as we go. Okay. So uh, when we do things like psychic readings, when we do things like identifying synchronicities, when we do things like rituals, what we're doing is we're tapping into the collective unconscious level of reality, which is where all of these symbologies over, overlap, right? And we are uh, 
either reading things if we're doing divination or creating things with law of attraction or uh, with synchronicities we are we are uh, riding the flow of the river of symbology into our next space okay i know that's kind of complex but mm, that's what i got okay had to have some water okay so the when we are looking at synchronicities in particular because this is this is what we're doing what we're looking at is the energies coming together of common intentions using the law of attraction energy right when you have an intention that you're holding it, the, the more strongly you hold an intention, the more common your synchronicities will become. The more open you are to receiving the synchronicities, the more strongly the synchronicities will come in. Okay, because you're holding the intention of having the synchronicities, which thereby uh, amplifies and, and, and um, increases the number of those synchronicities because you're pulling them to you right? What we focus on expands. That's, that's the yes. key here. Right? Yes. So if you're focusing on the synchronicities, you will see more of them. Okay. Now, how do we know it's a synchronicity? Uh, well, Celestine prophecy goes into that in great detail with the nine insights. And there's even another book called the 10th insight. Uh, mm -hmm. but I'm going to work with sort of the basics that most people recognize, which is what is a standard synchronistic event? It's like, oh, well, you know, I go to an event and I meet somebody there who changes my life. Okay. Now in that event, in that situation, it may be that you were calling somebody to you who was, uh, going to be a catalyst for the next stage and that that was a law of attraction thing. It could also be a sacred contract that you had with that person to show up in your life at that point in time. Okay. So, and it doesn't really matter which one it is. It, it, so, you know, I mean, I know you can, I know you guys want to know where everything comes from. I know uh -huh. you're like, well, what about this? And you're I, hearing I that, right? You, it doesn't fucking matter. It doesn't fucking matter. Repeat after me. It doesn't fucking matter. Fucking matter. Okay. <laughs> so this but is what I'm saying, if, right? So it doesn't yeah. matter, but it's not that I can't trust it. Correct. Because that's because that because you know me with, with the trust issues. So if I, I do. don't know where it's coming from, how do I know that I can trust it? And it's not something else trying to veer me off my path. Okay. So the question that you're asking has an in inherent um, buying into of okay. a story that says that you are not divinely led at all times. Ah, okay. Okay. Because okay. for something to be trying to drag you off your path, that's something mm -hmm. trying to get you, right? Right, right. And if you are, you know, in your early stages, because you're in this good and evil, right and wrong, black and white, up and down, you know, whatever experience, right? Um, you may, in fact, attract things to try and drag you off your path. Okay. But once you start doing your inner work, and you're no longer playing the victim, then that those energies don't really engage as much, right? Not that they never come. I mean, you know, shit happens, right? But 99 times out of 100, they're not there because you are not playing the victim. Now, if somebody gets mad and mm -hmm. sends something in your direction and, and like purposely targets you, well, that's, that's a different story, right? Right. Um, but you know, you also have to ask yourself, what were you doing that it allowed that to happen and allowed it to impact your energy, right? Because, you know, if you're holding your energy field properly, if you've got good shields up, if you got good wards up, none of that shit should help, should, should impact you. People can throw things at you all day long and it really shouldn't impact you, right? So, you know, where is the permission that you gave for that to happen? Right. Gotcha. So, okay. Um, so I, it, it's so funny that you asked that because it doesn't even cross my mind. Right. <laughs> I don't even, I'm like, what? <laughs> somebody coming to get you? What? And I'm like, Oh, what? Wait, yeah, I remember when that was a, when that was a concern and when that actually would happen. But 
Um, yeah. Not for, you know, over a decade for me at this point. So, uh, you know, it's like that, but, or mm -hmm. roughly a decade, I should say. But the, this is the sort of thing that you want to pay attention to in terms of, you know, there are synchronicities that show up that, okay, I, let me, let me feel into the question that you asked because I want to try and find that. Um, okay. So here's the deal. Here it is, right? It's the same thing as a con artist, right? You can't con an honest man is the way that saying goes, right? The same idea applies for energetics is if you are balanced and centered, you cannot con a balanced and centered person in, in the energetic. So if you are balanced sense. and centered and you mm -hmm. are not seeking something outside of you, desperately looking for something that you're missing inside of you, mm -hmm. then it is very hard for anything with bad intentions to drag you out of your, your mission, your role, your whatever. Right. Okay. And so if something shows up and it feels good, not because you are like desperate for it, but because you go, Ooh, this feels magical this and not nice. because you're desperate for magic, right? Watch your energy. If you're desperate, then you're in a bad place, right? Then, then I'm more susceptible to attracting those con artists and yes. then I'm going to fall for it and then kick myself in the butt for falling for it. And then it's just that vicious circle that we got to get out of. Precisely. Right. All right. So if your energy, if you check your gut and it is twisting or dropping in any way around this situation, then that could be problematic. Okay. So now I'm also going to say that if you get excited about it and you don't believe you deserve it and things like that, then your gut can have those sort of responses as well. But this is why we do our inner work, right? That's why this is so important. <laughs> This is why it's so important to do your inner work is because, you know, if you don't do it, then you can't delineate between these things, right? Now, if you see the energies and the bright and shiny shows up and all of that, then that's great. I have walked into a room of 500 people, literally mm -hmm. 500 people, and said, who do I need to talk to? And saw a bright, shiny person on the far side of the room, and she and I became friends for the next decade, okay? Um, and I really, I, I looked at the rest of the people in the room. I was like, eh, and I didn't really need to talk to any of them because they weren't bright and shiny. Okay. So you can do that. That is a way to, to consciously choose to have a synchronistic experience. Right. You know, um, but you know, these things can just show up of their own accord as well. Right. So, you know, these are the types of things that you want to pay attention to. So like, when we were thinking about moving here, we had been putting out the intention of moving. We had been putting out the intention of having a, a of it being in a Latin American country because we were looking at Spain and Portugal, right? And we had been putting out the intention of having it work for my current clients and be easy access to get back to visit family and things like that. And it had never occurred to me to come to Central America, not even once. And out of the blue, Kathy's like, well, why don't you consider Panama? And I was like, Panama? Why would, what's in Panama? I don't know. I don't know anything about Panama. I've heard of Costa Rica, but can't Panama? What about? Yeah. And I was like, ah, I don't know, blah, blah, blah. And she's like, no, 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 you know, think about it. So, you know, we went and looked it up, but that's a synchronicity. She had, she had been studying it for the last year, right? That's a synchronicity. These are the sorts of things that you see is that when somebody else happens to have what you need, then that's how the synchronicities work. And so, you know, it's that it's the same thing as like the story I told you guys uh, ages ago about getting onto a plane um, and taking my brown sugar with me from mm -hmm. my morning breakfast and going, I don't, why do I, why am I bringing brown sugar with me? I don't know, but I need to bring the brown sugar. Okay. And then having the people in front of me ask for it. So uh -huh. that, that synchronicity of them getting that is, you know, they could take that as a message, right? These are the site the sorts of things. Sometimes they're small. Sometimes they're very small. They're like, Oh, this person happened to have brown sugar on. Them. 
right? You know, I might, might just be that life is supposed to be like good, right? So things like that, right? So uh, when we're looking at synchronicities, they are a combination of factors. Sometimes it's just the right things lining up. Uh, and the universe just bringing together the people who have those common goals. Uh, sometimes it's like the story that, that um, I told about going to the spiritualist church and going, eh, I'm not going to go. And them going, no, 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 you have to go. She won't be here next week. I'm like, okay, my guide said that. And so I went and she's like, you're the message I was waiting for. And I'm like, Okay. Right. Okay. So sometimes it's a, it's somebody listening to their guides and their guides sending them to provide somebody else with a message. Right. Mm -hmm. And, you know, sometimes it's just the energies lining up and crossing in the way that, that they are intended to do. Right. Because we are holding common intentions and therefore we may, we magnetize each other. Does that make sense? One more time. Uh, exp explain magnetize each other. Yeah. Okay. So <laughs> when you focus on an intention, what you are doing is you are calling it to you by becoming magnetic for it, right? You are resonating with the energy of that intention and that creates an energy resonance field that magnetizes that intention to you. If someone else has a similar intention or something mm -hmm. else has a similar purpose, it will be drawn to you from the force of your intention and the force of their intention. And so okay. that's how people come together, right? And sometimes it's somebody from your soul family, from a past life, from, you know, whatever, soul contract. Sometimes it's just random synchronicity because of common intent. It doesn't matter which one it is. It's there because you've called it into being. So when you're not trusting where it came from, what you're actually not trusting is yourself and your ability to manifest positive things for yourself. Well, that, yeah, that makes sense because then I'm working against myself and I'm right. basically blocking myself yes. from a uh, uh, resistance. Sorry, I couldn't Absolutely. think of the word. Um, yeah. uh, moving forward That's and then right. I'd say, okay, ego, stop it. Yeah. Right. Yeah. You know, so yeah. is, so in synchronicity, um, how I've seen it, uh, um, and believe this fits in is the same, I'll say themed thing keeps showing up yes. and it's like, Hey, you need to turn your focus to this, right. blah, blah, blah. So that's when I have my, you can't make this shit up moments. Yes. <laughs> That's, I'm like, okay, wait a minute, hold up. I just happened, I'm going to make the story up. I knew I had a great one and then I forgot what it was. It'll come to me eventually. <laughs> but like I walk into Walmart and I'm doing my grocery shopping and all. And I have my list. I'm going oranges, 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 oranges. Random person comes up and says, oh, you know the oranges are on sale two for one today, right? Oh, thank you very much. So it didn't happen with oranges. It literally happened with something else. I forgot what it was. I was but, but they literally are giving me hey, here's the sales today, and oh, by the way, boom, it was literally on my list. I can't make that shit up. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Well, and, um, you know, I've had an experience like that in Bed Bath & Beyond, right? Because I go in with all of my coupons because they send you a million coupons and they yes. don't expire and whatever. And, you know, especially when we were leaving the country and I wasn't going to be in a Bed Bath & Beyond, I grabbed my entire stack of coupons, right? And I just started handing them out in the checkout line. I said, do you have a coupon? 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 And I handed out all my coupons. And there were several people who were like, oh, my God, I wasn't sure how I was going to pay for this. Or, oh, I That's manifested awesome. this not costing this much, right? Um, yeah. I had several people say that to me. And I was like, yeah, you're welcome. <laughs> happy to be the, yeah. the, the, the hand of the universe today. Right. Yeah. But that sort of thing. Right. Um, because I, I, I hate to see a coupon go to waste. So yeah. Also taking a different way home for me, mm -hmm. like for work and then turned out the other way that I'm like, why? Do, what? And sometimes I don't even realize I'm going a different route until I go, wait, I, well, crap, I missed my turn. I guess I'm going home this way <laughs> only to find out later watching the news that there was a huge wreck. That yeah. 
and going the other way, either one that I could have been a part of because the timing was there or two, I would have been really stuck delayed getting it. home and all yeah. that, you know, stuck in it. So yeah, yeah it's, it's kind of those, you, what the hell? You, you can't make this up if you tried, you know, yeah. real life well, is stranger than fiction. It is. And it's, it's <laughs> like when I was on walkabout at the very beginning of my walkabout, I went to this festival and I went to set up my tent and I kept going back to the same place over and over and over again. I kept going. I wasn't aware that I was like circling around this one tent that I was trying to set up my tent near it. And there just wasn't a good space, but I just kept going back and going back and going back. And I finally just gave up and went someplace else. But when I met the person who was in that tent, who was the person that I ended up following home after the, the event, uh, you know, I was like, when when he walked me back to his tent, I was like, oh, my God, you're the person I was trying to camp next to. <laughs> I didn't even know I was trying to do it. Right. And That's then awesome. uh, later, uh, you know, before I met him, I was in the hot tub at the event with a couple of other people who, as it turns out, were his his teacher and her husband. And then now there are 600 people at this site. You know, 600, uh, no, my bad, 1,800 people at this site, wrong, wrong event, 1,800 people on the site. And I happened to be in a hot tub with his teacher and her husband, and then randomly met this other woman who was, uh, you know, who I connected with really well. Her name was also Kelly, and, and she introduced me to him, and then after I met him, I discovered all of these synchronicities that had happened around him. And when he and I met, he actually walked up and planted a kiss on my lips. He was like, nice to meet you. And he kissed me. And I was like, I, I was taken aback, but I wasn't upset. And he looked at me and he's like, I don't know why I did that. <laughs> You're like, and yes, then, I have that effect on people. Right. And, <laughs> and I was just like, okay. And, and then all of these synchronicities came out, right? The, uh, the, the, the whole tattoo <clears throat> ritual that I told you guys about, I, I had two friends and he was one of them who decided last second not to be there to support me in getting my tattoo, which was my dedication to grandmother spider. And I was upset, but I was, I was like, oh, okay, you know, it'll be all right. Clearly this is what's meant to be. I'm not supposed to have anybody I know involved. Okay, fine, blah, blah, blah. And then wouldn't you know, the universe brings in this woman whose entire life is around spinning and weaving cloth. She spins her own thread, she weaves her own cloth, and they sent her over to talk to me while I was getting ready for my tattoo I didn't even know this about her yet. And she said, do you mind if I stay? And I looked at her really hard because her energy would be built into it. And I, I was like, yeah, you can stay. And then they asked me to state the intention for the tattoo. And I said to learn how to walk the web of life gracefully before I learn how to weave it. And she looked at me and said, wouldn't you? She said, isn't that funny? Because that's what I'm here doing. I'm selling my thread and my, my cloth. And that's what I do is I spin thread and I weave cloth. And I was like, wow. Yeah, right? That, that is yes. synchronicity at work, right? My entire journey, because that was the beginning of my walkabout, I was making my dedication to Grandmother Spider. She was telling me, I will have your back. I will look out for you. I look at this. I have pulled away the people who are not supposed to be here, and I have put the person in who is the perfect person to hold this space for you. That, and the same thing happened with the tattoo artist. I... I thought that I had missed out on doing it. And he contacted me at one o'clock in the morning and I happened to be awake. And he said, if you get back to me before I leave in an hour at one o'clock in the morning, I will hold a space for you. And I was like, wow. yes. <laughs> so, and that's because somebody else picked up my message and emailed it to him. Right. I had no way to predict that that was going to happen, but it, it happened. So this is the sort of thing that happens when the synchronicities start flowing. Right. And the more significant the journey you're on, the more the more synchronicities will come up. We don't get synchronicities as much in day to day life because we don't really need them. 
right? We know where we're going. We know what we're doing. We're in our rote experience, right? So the more you get out of your rote experience, the more synchronicities will show up because that's when you have the opportunity to grow and, and to have new ways of being come into play. Um, I, you know, it's a funny thing. I was, I was at dinner the other day with friends, new friends here. And I was telling a story uh, about something that happened in my life. And, and one of my friends who had heard some other stories recently looked at me and was like, Oh my God, what, what your life, your life has been so interesting. And I'm like, I have often said that if I published my memoirs, I would have to do the second half of my life under an assumed name because nobody would believe me that all of these things had happened to one person. And she started looking at me like that. And I was like, oh, yeah, I get that, right? Because I have this tendency to say yes to weird shit, right? (laughs) So (laughs) because of that, I get a lot of really interesting experiences. And, and, you know, my mother was the same way. In fact, uh, she was at work one day and she was telling a story. And the woman at, at work looked at her and said, I don't know why you keep telling these stories. Nobody believes you. I don't know why you make this stuff up, blah, 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 blah. And just like God, came at my mom's face about it. My mother Whoa. did nothing. She just wrote down my name and my phone number and handed it to the woman. She's like, what's this? She's like, that's my daughter's phone number. Feel free to, to verify any story I've told you. And she was like, oh, my God, they're all real. <laughs> She's like, yeah, I don't have a need to lie to you about my life. <laughs> But that's the thing is that most people live very small existences. And when you start to open up Mm -hmm. and be available to a larger experience, that's when your synchronicities will show up. That's when the adventure expands. That's when your life gets interesting, sometimes in good ways, sometimes in not good ways, but it gets interesting. And you build your ability to manage and navigate at a larger level. And so, uh, you know, Choose wisely, young Jedi. <laughs> right? That's it. Well, I remembered my, my synchronicity story. Okay. Because it, it, I just remembered if we have time. Yep. Um, so Mitch and I um, had been talking about the possibility of eventually um, living on tribal land whenever it goes for sale, right? And, of course, we know nothing about this or anything. Kid you not, the next day... I'm on YouTube just kind of feeling around, and there's a realtor on there talking about living on tribal land. I said, well, isn't this interesting? So I emailed it to to Mitch and all. So we're kind of discussing it. So now fast forward to the weekend. So I go to, uh, it was a weekend for me to get my nails done. So I was like, oh, I really don't feel like going to get my nails done. It was a rainy day. I'm like, eh, I'm like crap okay fine i'll go get my nails done it just wouldn't get out of my head go get your nails done go get your nails done go get your nails fine so i'll go get my nails done so i notice this lady before i walk into the shop she's outside smoking and i kind of noticed her didn't pay her half of mine went on in and then she comes and sits right next to me she's an older lady beautiful silvery white hair right and we she gets sit, sitting down and she we get to chit chatting you know and everything And however the subject came up, she told me she was married to a Native American. And I said, really? She was like, yes. She says, you know, she says, and I'm a, um," and she said the word, and I'm going to, however you say um, white woman, that was, that's how they, you know, uh, referred to her, but in a very loving way as she's learning their traditions and all right. Um, Mm -hmm. And it was a, it was in their language and I forgot that. So, but anyway, they went to go live. Um, as she's meeting his tribe and all on onto the uh, onto that land, and eventually over time, she was telling me like at the powwows, I learned all about powwows, um, mm-hmm. and at the big festivals that certain Native Americans in certain tribes they are allowed to wear certain uh, wardrobe for certain ceremonies, but if even if you are married, um, you have to earn the right to be able to wear that uh, yeah. ceremonial garb uh uh, wardrobe and so she says and she says it took a while she said but i was actually i was honored because i was invited to wear that along with the other ladies and i was like oh my god i'm getting chills i'm still getting chills you know if y'all can see this i'm getting chills telling the story so and i told him like okay apparently i was supposed to be here because 
who's going to make this up that right. I really didn't want to come get my nails done. I sit next to a lady who's married to a Native American who went through this process. So I was asking her different questions, you know, what's allowed, what's not allowed and all of that. And uh, we just had a very interesting conversation. So she ended up, she was like, well, if you don't mind, she says, I'd like to get your phone number. She says, and if everything works out, she says, we'd like to have dinner with, with you and your husband. That way, if I can't answer any questions that y'all have, my husband, I know can. And I'm like, oh, awesome. my gosh, you can't make this up. <laughs> right? Yes. So it, and in the middle of us talking, I was like, so y'all got some y'all got some humor. Because she says, well, do you know what saging is? And I'm like, yes, I know what sage. I'm like, just to let you know, I have a shaman. I have a high priestess. She was like, oh, you're in it. <laughs> I'm like, yes. I'm like, I have a shaman. And I said, I actually do, you know, I'm co-host of a podcast with her. And she was like, oh, girl, you're going to be fine. <laughs> <laughs> but you can't make that up. So, so that yeah. was my synchronicity story. So, uh, so awesome. this was extremely interesting, I, I thought. Um, and you thank there? you, Mary, for suggesting this. This was awesome. So, Kelly, you actually froze. I'm so sorry. All right. Which one of us lost? Okay, Kelly froze on my end. Wasn't me. I don't know if it's me or her. Okay, well, so we're going to. Hold for a second and so see if Jules comes I'm back. I'm just going to keep talking until she <laughs> comes back nope. to me. My internet has that... disconnected. <gasps> oh, there you are. Is that me? Oh, okay. So she's going to be right back, guys. Um, so in talking about synchronicities, I think the message really is pay attention. There are no coincidences. And that's what Kelly and I were actually talking about this before the podcast came on. Um, before we started recording and it was to there are really no coincidences that it's it's always meant to be and all and all right now she's back see I was filling in one for you while you were gone I'm like okay so until she comes back I'm like she froze yeah. and I was like I frozen or is she frozen I don't know yeah so exactly yeah, that story was amazing so so yeah yeah so. so, all right. So uh, I think that covers the synchronicity portion of our conversation. Um, uh, I do want to recommend that, uh, you know, we've been talking about doing energy work and we've been talking about, you know, doing your internal work rather. And there is um, the quiz that is on the homepage of my website. It's actually on every page of my website at the very top. It's the... Uh, what is your shadow work readiness score quiz? And I highly yes. recommend that you take that. Uh, if you have not been doing your work or if you've been doing it, but you're not sure where, you, you know, what your next step is, it's a really great way to determine whether or not uh, you are um, doing the right stuff for you and, rather, and not trying to skip steps, right? So uh, go in and check out that quiz. It will give you a complete diagnostic. It's really amazing, the, the, the results. And people are like, oh, my God, I feel totally called out. <laughs> like, I feel seen. <sighs> right? <laughs> so, uh, yeah, check that out. And uh, if you are someone who is, if you do that quiz and you come back with exploring the self or further, uh, then, um, you know, you may want to check out, we're doing a uh, Inner Peace 101 certification program for coaches. So you could learn What is this? This deliver. is new. <laughs> yes, it is. You could learn. I didn't tell Jewel. <laughs> you didn't tell me. How could she not tell me? I have to know these I, things. I wanted you to be surprised. <laughs> so, yeah, we're doing a certification program for Inner Peace 101 for coaches to build their own practice, teaching my Inner Peace 101 uh, program, uh, because I just, I want it to go out to more people. I want more people to have access to it. And there's only so much time we have to do any, uh, any groups. And so, um, 
I will be running a six-month certification process. It is a four-month program that we run, but it is a six-month certification because I also have to teach you how, how to do good coaching, how to do the energetics, how to do uh, the, the marketing and the, the whole shebang on getting the business to work. Uh, sales calls, so the whole nine yards, right? So uh, there's going to be an in-depth process around learning how to do this. But basically, it's a business in a box. You know, it's everything you need, soup to nuts, to get your coaching practice off the ground doing the Inner Peace 101 certification, the, the Inner Peace 101 program, rather. So uh, if that's interesting to you, check it out on the website. I literally, I have the I have the page up, but I don't have it linked yet. So by the time this come out, comes out, there will be a link. I don't know where it is, but we will put the link in the show notes so that you can go directly there because I'm not sure how... Oh, I'm going to structure that on the page yet. So, I, I, you know, you guys know I do this. I tell you stuff before I get it up on the website. That's the benefit of getting the podcast and, and doing the whole nine yards. Now, if you happen to have been live on this program, you would have been able to hear about <laughs> this several weeks before other people are hearing about it. And so if you had wanted to be live on the program with us and ask questions and, and get more information faster then uh, you need to join the mailing list because that's where we put the link to come into the live uh, recordings that we do. So, and you can always, always do that. And so, yeah, I think that's everything for this week, except for the Kellyism. So let me think yeah, about Kellyism. what going to be. Oh, yes. Open to new experiences, set strong intentions and watch for the synchronicities. I like that. I like that. All right. Well, that is all that we have for this week, folks. So tune in next time when Kelly adds another chapter into your guide to energy, magic, and the spirit world. I'm Jules here with Kelly Sparta, and you have been listening to Spirit Sherpa. So long, everyone. Bye. <laughs>